Alright, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo IdeaPad Flex-14 IWL. So we're going to be using a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver, and we're going to be removing all the screws from the bottom. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. So we got three going along here. This one was missing. Alright, and then we got three along the middle, and then we got four along the front. So let's remove all these screws. Customer needs their data, so we're just going to pull the SSD out of here and then mount it to a USB device to be able to read it. Okay, so let's get all these screws out. Alright, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Um, if you can't contribute that way, it'd help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then just like and comment on them because that's what the YouTube algorithm likes to see. Alright, so now that we got all the screws out, let's go ahead and uh, pull the bottom cover off. So on this specific model, it looks like it connects to the palm rest right there. So what we're going to do, I get my fingernails in there, I push with the back uh, on the back with my thumbs and then pull with my fingernails and that should undo the clips. It looks like this, the plastic's kind of all brittle and broken, but uh, just go like that. We'll go around the sides and continue the same, go around this side and continue the same. Maybe they dropped it, that's why it's completely dead. All right, but we'll go around these sides and do that. And then usually for this back clip, sometimes it helps to kind of like wiggle this as you kind of like pull up on it. So pull up and then kind of wiggle. If it doesn't work, then we might have to see about pulling some more clips out. But uh, let's go ahead and lift this a little higher. Oh, okay. So we just had to lift it higher and it kind of popped out. And there's the under bottom side of the cover. Okay, here's what we have inside. Um, we do have an M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD here, the battery. Um, it only has one fan, this is missing. Um, and then it looks like some RAM here, CPU soldered to the motherboard. Um, you got this USB board with the two USB ports and the SD card slot, as well as these buttons here on this separate board. What are those buttons for? Uh, power button as well as the one key recovery button. Sometimes if you accident, if you break the power button by pushing it in too hard, um, you can use a little needle and in the hole on the side of the laptop, you can use that or a little uh, folded out paper clip to push that to turn on the one key recovery mode and you can tell it to do a normal startup. That's on its own board, so if this breaks, you can replace this piece. Two screws holding it in place, then it looks like you can pop it out. Of course, you do have to remove that. There's a latch there, and then you can pull that cable out. Um, fan is on this connector here, and then you got that. There's only one stick of RAM, most likely, because this looks like soldered RAM. Um, if you're wondering how to get that out, I don't know if I did a thumbnail, so let me line that up, sorry. Okay, it's a little crooked. Okay, so we'll get a thumbnail there. All right, so did I talk about everything here? Um, you do have the wireless card underneath here. The antennas, if you need to remove them, you go from the tails of the antennas and pull them up, but you will have to remove this cable to get to that. Um, if you're not sure how to do that, I do have videos showing that on a lot of other computers, so watch that one. Um, you do have this cable here. It looks like a keyboard uh, flex cable. Again, there's a ZIF or zero insertion force connector here. Um, you just flip that latch up, and then to close it, you just slide your finger over to latch it down batteries here to get this out you grab that and you kind of just wiggle and pull it it helps to remove the screw so you can lift the battery up first here's the battery model information l18c4pf3 um, that's the model number of the battery okay and what else here okay you got a keyboard backlight connector here you have this cable which is for jfp most likely fingerprint reader um, and then jtp1 is for the touchpad speaker connector here which these speakers aren't held down with screws they're just held in with these rubber pieces so you can just lift them out and then a cable runs along from that speaker to this speaker and is there anything else in here to kind of let you guys know dc jack charge port connector is right there um, if you're gonna take that out you do have to take these screws out it helps to open the laptop slightly take the screws out and then when you slowly close it, it the hinge will stay up then you can usually get under there and pull it over um, I don't see a screw holding this in, so most likely it's just held in by the hinge covering it. LCD, LVDS connectors here. If you're going to mess with this, make sure that you disconnect the battery first. Very important. 
After you disconnect the battery, open the laptop and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. Very important, all right? If you don't and you pull this out, there's a good chance you'll fry the backlight circuit or your screen or their motherboard. All right, you can also damage this cable. But to remove this cable, you can kind of grab this tab. Usually it's hard to just pull it straight up. Usually I have to go in with my fingernail underneath the little edge or the side of it and then pop it up while I'm pulling on that. I do have videos showing that as well. So um, yeah, if you can't figure it out, watch a few of my other videos. Some of these models look like they have a dedicated GPU graphics card here. So they have this spot where they would solder it there. Um, but yeah, other than that, I think that's about it. I'm going to pull the SSD out now for the customer and then they're going to pull their data. So here's that little Lenovo sticker. Kind of interesting that it just peeled off. Normally these stickers just crumble so you can't take them out. All right, we're going to be switching over to a JS1 screwdriver to remove that screw. Oops, switch to the, that's the wrong one, accidentally used the JS0. Use JS1, all right, get that screw out. As you can see, it pops up slightly at an angle, and then we can pull this out. Oh, sorry, I forgot to show the RAM. Hopefully their SSD is good. All right, so the RAM here, I get underneath the corner edge with my fingernail, and then I pop it up. Of course, again, you can use um, pry tools and stuff like that. All right, now you got this. There's two metal tabs here. They're spring-loaded. You just pull it to the side. You can see the stick of RAM pops up like that, and you can go ahead and pull that out. And the RAM is a 4 gig. PC4 2666V. You should be able to use any PC4 2666V RAM. Um, so yeah, if you want, you can put a 16 gig stick. I don't know if they have a 32 gig stick, but uh, most likely since that's four gigs, this is probably also four gigs. Um, but anyways, we're gonna line this thing back up and get that all pushed back down into place. Okay, just like that and like that. And there we go. All right, so I'm gonna let the customer pull their data off and then I'll be back to seal this computer back up, but basically we put the cover back on and get all the screws in. All right, give me a second, I'll be back. Okay, apparently the customer said they never tried the one key recovery button, they just said it wouldn't turn on, so let me actually try that button real quick and see if anything happens. It's getting some power, and then it just turns off. Yeah, so maybe it's dead completely. Yeah, the keyboard lights up and it just shuts off, so that's uh, definitely a motherboard issue. Um, yeah. I can try doing a battery reset because this battery also ask, acts as the CMOS BIOS connection, so or CMOS BIOS RTC battery. So we're going to grab this connector and we're going to kind of wiggle and pull it out. Okay, again, wiggle side to side. There you go. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the power button here. Let me double check, make sure I'm pushing the right one. Okay, it's the one that's further down here. So I'm gonna press and hold that power button for about 15 seconds. And then we're gonna go ahead and put it the battery back in and see if we're if we have any luck. Okay, give it another 10 seconds. Hopefully we are lucky here and hopefully it will turn on, but I have my doubts, I'm pretty sure it's dead. All right, there we go. We'll get this back in. There's so much broken plastic pieces here. So many broken plastic pieces that I think the motherboard's probably destroyed. It probably got dropped or something and then, yeah. All right, let's try and turn it on again. So far, nothing's happening. Oh, the fan's spinning. No keyboard light, but the fan was spinning. Nope, nothing happened. Nothing at all. No more fan. Let's try pressing it one more time. Oh, actually, the power light is staying on here, as you can see. So power light is staying on, but nothing's on the screen. Nothing's happening with the fans. And oh, we did get it to power up, as you can see. So maybe we're lucky and we don't have to. Maybe I fixed their computer. OK, let's shut this off. Let's put the SSD back in. I did put it in. Um, this little USB reader thing. So let's see, because that, if that's the case, the customer is going to be lucky and we got their computer working. So let's get that back out. We're going to put the SSD back in the computer and maybe they're super lucky and we got it working. So put this at an angle. All right, then we're going to get the screw and put that back in. Okay, let's see. We can even put the little 
warranty sticker back on. All right, or tamper seal sticker. All right, let's open this back up. Let's power it on and see if we got any luck. Keyboard is lighting up. I saw the screen flicker and I think we are good. So yeah, if your computer's having issues starting up, maybe give that a try because that seemed to have done the trick. Let's give it a few seconds and make sure it powers up. And the customer's probably gonna be a lot happier now because now they have a working computer. So there you go. Anyways, let's close this up. And we'll put the screws back on, the bottom cover and the screws back on, and we should be good to go. So hopefully this helped you guys out. Again, if it did, um, like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If this trick worked, it probably saved you at least $100. So if you can... At least send me like 50 cents or something. <laughs> all right, anyways, that's pretty much it. Let's get all these screws back in because I feel like if you brought it somewhere else, they're going to say it's a motherboard issue and they're probably going to charge you like hundreds of dollars. So, yeah, so please keep that in mind. Help me continue making these videos to help others out. And yeah, all right, let's get all these screws back in. Again, like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And yeah, if it helped you save a bunch of money, again, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and really does allow me to continue making these videos for a living. And also, um, if you can't contribute that way, it'd be very helpful if you could watch a few of my other videos and like and comment on those as well. All right, let's get these last few screws in. Customer's probably gonna be very happy now. And we should be good to go. All right, let's get all of this back in. Looks like I was able to fix it better than I was hoping because I was worried, thinking that maybe it was the power button that was broken. And then if that was the case, then they can turn it on using like a pin or something with the one key recovery button. But this is the best case. It actually powered on after um, just doing a battery power drain. All right, so anyways, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Let's drop this. Bye. Oh, yeah, if you're wondering, yeah, I did clean the dust inside here, so dusted that all out. All right, it was pretty dusty, and the fan's all clean now. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. See you guys in the next one. Bye.